Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 648 of the Agostino Zynga show. That is 648 of the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. I hope you are doing well wherever this podcast may find you. I hope you are doing splendid. How am I? All good, all things considered. I cannot lie. I cannot bloody lie. I have been feeling pretty good these last few weeks. I'm not going to lie. What? difference it makes to your life when you start to work out more consistently and you start to do the things that you want to do or you need to do outside of that in order to kind of get your life where it needs to go those things really help but really the basis of it is the working out it really does make a big change well it has for me anyway because i was getting slacking here and there but now they've been going consistently and i've just recently purchased some flipping used hocker on a on a um running shoes that i've been flipping using to run as well i'm happy with that because you know those trainers are expensive i think they're like 100 pounds plus so i didn't want to be spending that on some brand new kicks especially because i'm going to be out there running every single day anyway and for whatever reason hockey on a on have a very big resale market for used trainers on ebay and most of them haven't been even used that much it's like you know a guy or gal decided to grab a pair of those cross-country type of ones and decided to go running you know in whatever hills that they are near to them and then over time just kind of got bored of them and then you got these flipping expensive really fancy you know chunky shoes sitting in your wardrobe somewhere taking up space you're like you know what let me just get rid of them and if you can get 30 pounds for them which i'm literally max paying is the maximum paying for a pair of used hockey on your own is at like 50 pounds unfortunately the price does you know depreciate somewhat but you still get some cash out of them so that's pretty decent especially when you consider they're not a hype shoe or anything but i really love them so i've got a pair at the moment that i'm about running with i actually might include a picture of them here if you're just checking them out via video if you're not i'm sorry i don't remember the actual name of them or actually actually grab them here maybe for my ebay let me see which ones i actually purchased so i can give you an idea on what i actually got here bear with me one second go on this one and you click on that and then it should show me yes yeah, so i got a pair of hockey on a on a speed goat fours in a red and a sort of like a bluey type of color which is quite nice because i generally don't tend to get bright colors when it comes to running shoes i tend just to stick with blacks so the fact that i got these bright red running shoes that i'm going to be stomping around in all over the streets of london is something that i'm very very happy about so i can't wait to finally get those on my feet and to finally finally be able to go out there running again as i kind of intended with my kind of um you know news resolution plans i had set out on my twitter which i'm going to look at again because it's hilarious because a lot of the stuff i haven't really been keeping up on but still i think it's a good measuring stick like i'm using my news resolution as guardrails in order for me to kind of make sure that i'm doing what i need to do they don't need to all be achieved but if i attempt to do them i'm still doing way better than if i wasn't doing them if you get my drift so it's a kind of a bit of a cop out but not really a cop out let me just kind of re recap them again so my 2020 23 um, new year's resolutions was to read 100 books was to figure 50 subs 50 000 subs sorry on youtube which have run a minimum of 20 miles per week was to maintain a weight of 200 pounds all year and was to do one hour of language learning per day and write and publish a blog per day day so the last three i'm on the way of doing them no so the last two i haven't done anything of um the what the maintain the weight i've obviously got to get to 200 first before i maintain it at the end of the year the run 20 miles i was waiting for my running shoes i finally got them so that would be cool Fifty thousand subs until the end of the year it's, it's achievable i think so it's got it's a bit of a stretch it's a hard stretch because i'm currently on like what seventeen thousand, i think on youtube subs this stuff doesn't matter as well it's just inconsequential but it's just the kind of stuff to kind of get you motivated and get you out of the out of the bed to kind of do stuff really doesn't really change the world it's not gonna really change my life in any kind of big meaningful way if i get 50 to you know, fifty thousand subs but still it's something to aim for so at the moment i've got seventeen thousand five hundred and seventy two, and i'm aiming for fifty thousand. so it's a bit of a stretch goal but i think it is achievable and obviously read 100 books i've already bought a ton already so that's going to be definitely easy and applicable to do actually before i continue let me actually go through and show you the books i bought for this month anyway in february because i don't think i updated my youtube about it did i so I've got a bunch of books for Feb that I'm going to be reading. So I'm really excited about that. As you can see here from the picture I've got here, I'm reading, holding up to my camera. I've got like, what is it? Seven books here? Seven or six? Six actually. Six books, I lie, six. So book number one here. I've got Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Now this is the same guy that also wrote Martian. So that should be really good. I've got a book here called Missionaries by Phil Kay. And it says here on the back, 
neither Mason, a US Special Forces medic, or nor Lisset, a foreign correspondent, has emerged from America's long wars in Iraq and Afghanistan unscathed, unscathed, sorry. Yet for them, war still exerts a terrible draw. Where else in the world can such a person go? All road leads to Colombia, where the US has partnered with the local government to stamp out a vicious civil war and keep the predatory narco gangs all at bay. Mason is ready for the good war and Lisset is more than ready to cover it. So this should be a really really good one and allegedly it's the barack obama's book of the year also which is hilarious you know black history month and all that even though he's you know mixed race and not black but yeah, whatever uh, then we've got another book here called all about love by bell hooks which i got recommended via twitter so black twitter um for some reason was talking about this book for a very long time it felt like a few months for a couple of months it felt like on black twitter everyone was talking about all about love by bell hooks i know nothing about this book haven't even read the synopsis or anything and i want to go into it blind so i can see what the hype is all about so don't tell me anything so i'm really eager to kind of check this out and someone actually messaged me the other day and said oh um it's funny you got this book because it's gonna it's gonna it's kind of i think they kind of said that it's considering my personality and how i speak about certain things it might be a bit of a um, discombobulator it might kind of fry my brain so i'm looking forward to it's fry my brain so let's see especially for the big hater that i am so to talk, to talk about a love book that's gonna be hilarious then i've also got my infamous life an autobiography of prodigy from mob deep who are you know one of a, a big fan of you know mob deep and prodigy just in general in terms of rappers up there they definitely will be in my top 50 dead or alive it's all personal of course but prodigy definitely one of my faves so r.i.p to the goat so i've got his autobiography i mean to buy for ages then i've got another kind of cultural book that i kind of get recommended a lot all the time um this one which is um fire in fire in the belly by cynthia star the life and times of david wojnarkovich is that how you say it wojnarovich 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 there we go here see that it says here david wojnarovich was a teen well, sorry was a teen runaway who barely finished high school but he emerged one of the most important voices in the generation he found um his tribe in new york's east village a neighborhood noted in 1970 1980s for drugs blight and the burgeoning art scene and his creativity spilled out in paintings photographs films text illustrations and his life his circle of east village artists moved on so he moved into the national spotlight just as the AIDS plague began and his devastating advance and arriving culture warriors targeted the arts. As the David Guy reputation as an artist grew, so did his reputation as an agitator because he dealt so openly with his homosexuality, so angrily in the circus as a person of AIDS, so fiercely with his world, so, so it would be censors. Fire in the belly is the untold story of a polarizing figure at the pivotal moment in American culture and one of the most highly acclaimed biographies of recent years. So I'm really looking forward to checking this out. I've read mixed reviews. Some people have said it's absolutely horrible and it's really overrated and the guy doesn't come across the greatest in this, but I'm eager to check it out. So it's a, and it's a bit of a thicky as well. And then lastly, I've got Brett Easton Ellis's new book, Shards. I'm super eager to check this out. I think the last book I read from Brett Easton Ellis, I think was the one, is it called like White or Grey? I forgot. I had it on an audio book that I listened to. I thought that was absolutely phenomenal. I listened to it a while ago. So it's the last Brett Easton book that I've read. So I'm eager to check this out also. So this is a Shards, which has been getting some rave reviews also. I'm really eager to check this out. Really eager to check it out. So that's my books. Um, and then on the music front, because I wanted to check and remind you guys about that, because, you know, I'm a bit of a fan of all the music -y. There's been an album that dropped this weekend or this past weekend that I've been listening to ever since it's released. And I think I want to highlight the albums that I listen to and they're still in rotation throughout the weekend heading into a new week. There's other stuff that drops that's like, you know, you just kind of, you know, listen to it in the moment and then kind of skip it and don't listen to it again. Sorry, but some of the albums that do drop that have that staying power, it's worth to mention it and to sort of praise and to kind of lift up the flipping artists in general. So one of them has to be Caroline Palachek's Desire I Want to Turn You Into so desire i want to turn into you absolutely phenomenal number one the cover art is absolutely banging i love that she's like splayed on the floor in what looks like something that could be like the bakerloo line right one of the most really ratty um lines that we ever have here in flipping london and um, with graffiti all over the place sand on the floor for some reason these horrible flipping chairs it's really cramped and small it's super humid in the summer it's just a horrible horrible line but it also happens to pass some of the most you know um desirable places in 
London to live and maybe some of the most expensive postcodes in London also. So it's a quite a bit of a, it's a bit of an oxymoron in that regard. So the, the, the album cover is absolutely phenomenal. So big up Caroline Parish if you're also, you know, giving a crap about that sort of stuff. But the tracks that I want to just highlight, the three tracks that to me stand out on this entire album, which I have to highlight, number one being Sunset. This to me sounds like something that could be a really good Rosalia banger, right? There's parts on this that I think would kind of work really well. You've got this kind of Spanish flamenco tango type of style thing. I think for a long time, I forgot the guy's name, but for a while, I forgot the guy's name where I was watching a lot of his YouTube videos online. It's this really famous salsa dancer who's like really ripped and he's got a long ponytail and he's and he's just, he's regarded as one of the best. I wish I could remember his name. I used to check out a lot of his salsa videos in general um, and just kind of feel that vibe because I think that was the time when I was really into Rima and Rima kind of reminded me his early stuff, that kind of singing, it kind of sounded almost, um, almost like, you know, yeah, almost Latin, almost flamenco-y, um, there was bits of body that were kind of um, Arabic sounding, you know, early Rima. Now he's kind of changed his sound, but that sort of like, yeah, that sort of like singing, that kind of wailing was just amazing and the beats overall. But anyway, going back to Sunset, in my opinion, in terms of an opening verse, I don't think it gets much stronger than this. Personally, it doesn't get much stronger. It's Sunset um, off of Carolyn Parrish's album and it goes, it goes as follows. These days I wear my body like an uninvited guest. I turn it right and right and right instead of turning left. But boy, your patience is like a magic kind of medicine because every spiral brings me back into your arms again. And a chorus, so no regrets because you're my sunset, fiery red, forever fearless. And in your arms, a warm horizon. Don't look back. Let's ride away. Let's ride away. Literally saying that now is giving me goosebumps. Literally saying those bars is giving me goosebumps. This is legit one of the most amazing opening verses and choruses I've ever heard in my entire life. And it's probably all under a minute or something. Again, credit to Caroline. Carol, Caroline, I'm not sure if it's Caroline or Caroline, but we're going to go for Caroline just in case. Big up Caroline Palaszczuk because for a track that, if I'm not mistaken, has like, I'm going to say off the top of my head, I'm going to guess and say it's 14 tracks. Let me see if, if I'm guessing right. Oh, it's 12, my bad, two off. So for an album that's got 12 tracks on it and, it's un, and it's, it hits 45 minutes in total duration, we have to give that lady a clap, a round of applause. We have to give a round of applause. Too many artists out here, um, you know, Trippy Red being a flipping good example, are just putting that absolute fraff. It's over an hour and something plus minutes. And legitimately, you already feel tired within the first couple of tracks. And it's only like 20 minutes in. And you're already like, oh my God, there's so much long to go in this album. Whereas with this album, I felt like I was checking to see what album, what track was playing because I didn't want it to end. I was kind of bummed by the time we got to Billions, right? And I'm going to talk about that track at the end as well. That other single, amazing. But that's, that's I feel like, just great sequencing, great production, great artistry. Everything about it is just amazing. To be able to put that much musical diversity because the thing about this album there's so many different sounds right there's like drum and bass type stuff there's what you'd call i don't know what you'd, what you'd call sunset flamenco salsa whatever type of music that is pure pop hits stuff that sound that sounds almost r&b-ish like really a broad range of kind of musical genres and it's all squeezed into a 45 minute album you can't go wrong with that and again you've got some of these highlights just popping up in there you're like oh special absolutely beautiful and also big up sega bodega as well for co-producing that absolutely flames track you know he's done a lot of really good stuff with shy girl as well so if you're not familiar definitely plug in with sega bodega that one's crazy good then of course the another one that i'm also a big fan of it's fly to uh, <laughs> fly to you sorry oh my god oh my god featuring grams and dido are you insane the back-to-back -back, the duet with with flipping karen patrick and you know grimes towards the end the beat switch up in the middle like i wish i could play it but now i'm going to get pulled instantly but if you like scan across to like i don't know two minutes in that track it switches up and goes into this amazing like you know flipping breakdown like it's so good it feels like one of the quintessential like amazing it's almost like trancey drum and bassy type of beat it's just beautiful i can only imagine what the remixes will sound like once 
once somebody decent grabs onto it it's so 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 good i don't want a four technique remix i want an actual really good remix it's so beautiful fly to you i definitely recommend check it out if you haven't already one of my favorite tracks on there and again the duet between you know grimes and flipping palajek is great dido kind of singing in there as well in the background um is really really nice and then of course the standout track um the second single if i'm not mistaken right yeah second single from this track billions as an ender i'm a big fan of artists who are able to kind of coherently put together like an amazing like i think of playboy kai might be a good example right because i think whole lot already if i'm not mistaken um or even not even whole lot already let's go back to dialit that is a good example of it because that's definitely my favorite although i still like whole lot already, i think dialit's definitely my favorite of his discography if i go back to dialit by playboy Carti, one of my favorite intros which is not really an intro long time in r.i.p you could switch those around right but let's just say long time is the intro and then you end the entire album with top featuring pierre Bourne. to me that's beautiful then you go to whole lot of red same thing you start um whole lot of red um i don't know why it does this to me. why is my whole lot of red grayed out for some reason i don't know why it's grayed out but for whatever you start with rockstar made and you end whole lot of red with um feel like dying to me beautiful and i feel like this album the same thing with caroline palaszczuk you got you got this amazing brilliant brilliant genre defining album that starts off with welcome to my island and ends with billions two very strong solid 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 tracks and yeah you just can't go wrong with it everything about it is flipping magical and i just can't imagine what it'll be like to see this woman perform live i really wanted to go check her out at primavera sound but unfortunately primavera festival the ticket price no the flight prices oh i forgot honestly because i think you know when you're going with like friends you usually tend to book early so because i'm so used to going to trips on my own like traveling to parts of europe to do my little techno tourism stuff i've kind of got used to just booking my thing where i want to book it right like whenever i'm in i'm, I'm in need to for a rave or a little bit of a skank i just go but then I'm, I've, i forgot that when i went with my friends last time or the last time that we ever went to primavera which might have been under 2019 or something maybe sooner before that we booked it quite far in advance because obviously you go with other people. You have to get things into motion. You have to book an Airbnb, book the flights. You have to get loads of things coordinated. So I just checked it randomly the other day just to see what the price was saying. And I was seeing like Ryanair flights. Now Ryanair is like, you know, your cheap budget airline, wherever you have in the States. I don't know what you guys have um, in terms of uh, budget airlines, but let's just say it's not good. It's not virgin. And they're charging up to £400 plus to go to Primavera Sound in Barcelona. I'm like, I can't do that. I just can't justify £400 on a Ryanair flight cramped in together. Do you know what I mean? Like squeezed in like a sardine, super uncomfortable, unable to sleep. Nah, I just can't do that. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to knock that one off the head. But if she comes back another time, I will. I did miss seeing Caroline Patrick this February. She came around Valentine's Day, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe the weekend before that. But I completely forgot about it. Like I didn't even remember that it was happening. Um, but I even I had it even said to my song, Kick, there should be a better a way to kind of save gigs in it on your on your flipping phone that you can kind of get alerted to because i had to save my song kick but i don't really check my song kick so it's kind of you know inconsequential why i even have it saved but song kick i feel like it's a good place to sort of like go through and see who's performing so i feel like not everybody puts their stuff up on dice um so it's quite hard to kind of figure out where to go and where to kind of check things in terms of live shows but if you guys have any recommendations please let me know but yeah um caroline palaszczuk's um Desire I want to I want to turn into you album absolutely a banger absolutely amazing I'm definitely gonna play uh, Fly to You as my end of track track of the day so definitely if you haven't heard it already you'll definitely hear it as my track of the day at the end of this podcast so big up Caroline Palaszczuk for doing that and being an absolute legend and putting together an absolutely coherent and amazing an amazing album I really enjoyed that so and then of course the next thing I wanted to talk about was I recently went to Fold I haven't been back there in a very very long time I think the last time or long time for me anyway maybe for you guys being to raves is something that you do kind of like here and there there's never something that's that serious but for me the last time i went to fold was maybe around september time probably for transmissions when they booked dvs1 and renee wise back to back like legitimately one of the best no no back to back sorry D dvs1 and renee wise as a whole lineup and if i'm not mistaken it actually worked the other way around instead of actually dvs1 ending it dvs1 started and renee wise was the one that ended it so it was a pretty sick way to put the show together i'm not going to lie um so when you walked in you're just hearing Ren you know dvs1 going absolutely crazy allegedly i heard from people that were in there that renee wise was on the dance floor going mad and then he went on, a, on behind the decks and performed. I was like 
that's what you live for so big up transmissions for always kind of booking um cool interesting people and then you know putting them in you know in different environments and also just having a good idea on how to program these nights really well because if that was me and i was booking it, i would just put you know devious one to end but switching them around was really cool and kind of added to the energy there like people that like shocked oh shit walking in especially like i did it and uh, whenever it was i think 12 and thinking shit devious one's playing you're like fucking hell absolutely surprising so that was absolutely great so last time what was september um i was meant to go to an or unfold but i keep missing them i think you know psychologically in my head i've still got this idea that sundays are meant for rest unless i'm going to like berlin to go to Bergheim or something i don't really see sundays as a time to rave although unfolds is a pretty decent and unique kind of presentation of sunday raving because they start at 12 p.m if i'm not mistaken and it ends at 12 a.m so you get you know all those hours of raving and you still get to go home at a reasonable hour to go to work technically on a monday but you know everyone that's going to unfold doesn't work a regular job they're all being creatives and doing cool fun things here i am slogging away doing regular work on construction sites and climbing up scaffolding like i'm spider-man i'm joking but you know what i mean so i went to see um went to fold i went for this night which was the um fold presents freddie k all night extended a pretty unique one because it went a bit longer than what fold nights usually go around you fold nights usually end at six but this one ended at seven started at 11 so you know freddie k playing all night and if you know anything about freddie k and his legendary sets at berghain he's end he's you know his closing sets and just generally him as a dj he does prefer to play really long extended sets to the point where if i'm not mistaken he got into a bit of a kerfuffle if i'm not mistaken i don't know what exactly exactly it was what rave it was but it's something to do with Berghain where he was meant to play he meant to play like an ending set the set got ended so yeah I think it was when Berghain reopened Berghain Berghain reopened and I guess for whatever reason the times have changed anyway they never come back to normal I think if I'm not mistaken Berghain used to end really late on a Monday like maybe 1 p.m or something crazy like that so it got it'll be open from basically Saturday all the way to Monday non-stop until like 1 p.m Monday and for whatever reason after the pandemic maybe it's just I've heard several stories that it's a staff shortage I've heard other stories that because the other guy moved out or left the business now they've kind of changed the working hours but regardless it's not as a longer set anymore to close so freddie k got annoyed by that and then he went after he finished his burger and said he kind of promoted the fact that he was playing i think at kit kat bar or somewhere else um as an after party and for whatever reason maybe the way he did it what he said in a tweet or something again rumors from people on the online who knows what's true something happened where you know he kind of fed out with people in Berghain in terms of booking or maybe he went on strike i don't know but it led to him maybe not doing too many closing sets now he's kind of back you know in line with stuff and he's there again doing great things so big up him but in general he's always known for doing really good extended quote-unquote um sets right playing for hours and hours and hours and end he's basically in some extent this is a bad analogy but bear with me he's basically our underground version of solomon now there, there was a time where solomon was underground like don't forget that one but Freddie K is probably our kind of closest reputation representation to it and obviously he's somebody that's very much of a music lover um he's got um an, an amazing actually I think really good radio show that I think he still does at the moment on SoundCloud I remember he was doing it a bit for a bit on Hoare that online radio station in Berlin um I think that's how you pronounce it right Hoare if I'm, if I'm not pronouncing it right but um now of course you know just traveling the world doing his thing so i think you can see him perform live because i've legitimately i don't think i've actually seen him play live oddly enough regardless of the amount of times that i've been out often to these parties that i think he would you know probably play at or i've been to places like berlin and gone to places like Berghain and stuff i actually haven't seen him play i think the one time i was meant to see him play i was meant to go to that club in georgia is it uh Basai Ani, however you pronounce that word, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I think I was meant to see him there once before, but you know, I kind of chickened out in terms of going to Georgia because I was a bit scared and whatnot, but I'm still going to end up going. Anyway, regardless, Fold is amazing. So, first things first, Fold's not too far from me, so it's like a 20 minute bike ride, you know, so that was pretty good. And obviously, I grew up in the area, so I know the area pretty well. So, it kind of, you know, I had to basically get myself ready to go pretty late because I kind of finished work late, and also I had to go early enough to make sure I catch the been 24 hour off license which is not 24 hour anymore because of annoying neighbors that are being antisocial and basically causing police to come around then i have to close at like 2 45 so before you know whatever so i had to kind of leave before then which was pretty decent because i left about one ish and then obviously a quick ride over there 20 minute ride on a bike which is i feel like the best way to arrive at a club you get a little sweat on you get some you know some nice fresh air through your nostrils and out through your mouth and you're just kind of ready to kind of go and i think when i stepped in that's what adrenaline i had from riding the bike 
carried me through for the next two to three hours before I even had bought my first drink. So I think that really helped and kind of helped me to pace the night. But the one thing that I forgot about Fold is how hot and humid it is in there. Oh my God. It's even more wet and hot and humid than it's ever been in the past. I'm not too sure if they've just given up on the air conditioning. I'm not too sure if the air conditioning is kind of kind of on a little bit. I'm not sure if this a, a tactic that they use is in terms of like, you know, if you're trying to create a space for people to dance and rave in, you basically have to be attuned to all these little tiny things where you place your doors, the lighting, the bar, um, the space between the, the stage, quote unquote, and the, you know, and the dance floor. Like all these things kind of play into how you kind of, you know, construct a space to make it uh, raveable, to make it an enjoyable space. And I wouldn't be surprised if part of that reasoning was to maybe kind of turn off the air conditioning a little bit and let people just sweat it out on the dance floor. Because I remember back in the day, Plastic Peoples, one of the best clubs in London ever, right? In the history of clubs back in the day. And this was around what, Cur is it Curtain Road in Shoreditch type of area? an amazing place right maybe the music was a little bit you know one note but in general just as a vibe and everything so cool because it was like a little cramped really small basement bar where you the dj was on the same level as you in terms of booth wise you could just literally touch over and touch the flipping turntable if you wanted to some people did do that sort of stuff and obviously got in big trouble but overall it's a splendid 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 spot and that a lot of the beauty of that space was because of how small it was so i'm wondering if over time you know, Fold just realised, like, in terms of a vibe, some nights when it gets really loud and larry, because a lot of people that follow Freddie K are what I would describe as club kids, right? We don't have many of them in London, but they are definitely the club kids that you would describe. They're, like, loads of the queer gay scene guys who are out there in full force, really letting their presence be known, which I'm going to touch upon later, but they definitely were there in force. So I definitely might add it to it. Loads of tops off anyway, so why not just turn the air conditioning off or put it really low so that the flipping heat of everybody in there slipping just sticking off the walls and it's really 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 popping off there and i really really bloody enjoyed that one i'm not going to lie in the slightest so that was absolutely amazing and very much enjoyable and then another thing i quick have to know if you haven't been there yet in a long time because i haven't since september of course they've moved where the cloakroom person is so sorry the, well, the, the locker person is so usually when you walk into fold um obviously you get searched at the place and you get you go to a ticket stand thing you have to hand over your id to one person take a picture on the camera or every single time to take a picture it's absolutely annoying but what it is you get your ticket scanned you walk up the stairs and as you open the main set of doors there's usually somebody stat on the desk there where you can kind of get your padlock and it's usually a girl or something or anybody who can, who cares and the padlock system works as usual you know standard vibe i think it's a five pound fee ten pound deposit and then um you get your locker and then you can basically get your shit in there one thing that's changed actually interesting enough if i'm not mistaken maybe i wasn't paying attention but they've numbered the pad they've numbered the padlocks and the and the lockers so whatever padlock you get is got for the corresponding pad it's for the corresponding um locker sorry i'm not sure if it was like that all the time but i, I kind of remember that this time maybe because i was sober so that maybe is a reason why but that's to be the case and then the other case i was going to say oh yeah and the table itself where you go get it done is at the back of the club now so it's not at the front where you kind of walk in it's now basically behind the dj booth kind of if you kind of go in a club you know what i mean there's a kind of room you kind of go into where there's more lockers and there's usually a toilet behind there and sometimes if you're if you are vip you can go back into the kind of the green room sort of space in there too but there is basically where the person you're meant to go get a locker from so that's a kind of a bit of a change which is a bit of annoying because it means you have to kind of you know go through the club with your coat and jacket on or maybe hold it in your hand and kind of clumsily try and walk past people to get your locker but hey what can you do um apart from that the music itself was phenomenal hearing freddie k do his thing for like three no four hours or plus that i was in there was really special especially in that space like i have a big thing about seeing those type of djs in their actual space that they're known for like you know seeing a freddie k closing Berghain is really important if you need to kind of get an idea of what he's actually like a dj because a lot of his kind of mystique and aura and legend has been kind of made from that place but it's also quite nice when you get someone like that playing in one of the best clubs that we have here in london because you also get i feel like a better representation of what he's actually like as opposed to if you play like in an e1 because e1 is a bit more I've, i guess in my opinion in my head anyway i don't feel it's true but in E one's a bit more of a commercial, normie, general crowd, whereas Fold is a bit more core, sceney, 
quote unquote undergroundy type people that go there um, or people that would want to be known as club kids or whatnot go there right so that I guess is a bit more a bit more of a better representation of what it's going to be like because I feel like the DJs definitely can can see the difference because someone like Freddie K tours all over the world he's probably toured all over England so he knows the difference between going to like a commercial club that's also into him and going to a club like Fold and seeing people that he would maybe see reflected in places like Berlin or other cool cities around the Europe and actually kind of getting to know them and whatnot and playing up to them so that was brilliant also seeing him marvel seeing seeing him flip and display all these talents mixing wise in terms of playing an all vinyl set because i know he plays all vinyl anyway but just reminding him playing all vinyl in that sweat box of fold knowing what heat does to records in terms of warping and skipping and him not missing a beat there were some ropey mixes here and there but not ropey like he was letting the elements get to him just ropey in terms of you know it's just vinyl isn't it? it is what it is part of the joy of listening to somebody play a vinyl set is hearing them work it out in real time whereas you know some people would say cdjs are too perfect in terms of like there's no real way to fuck it as long as you know how to beat match it's really impossible to kind of fuck up a mix on a cdj really to be honest unless you're really don't have a good ear for a blend or anything it's kind of hard to fuck it up well as on a vinyl it's kind of really easy to fuck it up because just the uh, getting you know matching beat matching is obviously hard because there's no visual bpm match or anything it's just difficult to do overall so the fact that he was doing it and figuring out on a fly was beautiful to see um and just the darkness of it all you forget how good well it like for everything in there is really done at a high level we've got to we have to kind of give the guys credit over there the lighting guys take it seriously um had us linked with the music and stuff and the guy there going crazy and the flipping um what to call it the lighting box set up towards the back there really taking his job seriously that kind of added to the mood it would go black for a minute then these spotlights will come out they'll blew out of nowhere then there'll be loads of smoke oh yeah that's what i did also i came in got my stuff locked in went straight to the front and um, spent about an hour and a half in there in the front just standing there really like an absolute you know bouncer probably looking like a bouncer or whatnot and just soaking it all in and seeing him play up, up front and close and personal was awesome and also seeing that everybody in the front was going absolutely nuts that's what I love about Fold. Doesn't matter who's playing, if it's people at the back, people at the bar, people standing next to the toilets, people even sitting down in a little sitting area, you know, on the other side people are just like tapping their feet dancing it's a real place for people that actually love to like you know dance sweat and get funky but it was interesting to see I'm not gonna lie it's interesting to see um what i would describe as like chatty type gays interesting really like because I, I i see a lot of people talk about that kind of personality or that kind of crew of people um within like Berghain you know uh dance what yeah Berghain kind of night reports there's a few of them on certain reddits where people basically speak about reviews on certain kind of you know um lineups or whatnot at Berghain and you hear a lot of people speak about that kind of aggro um you know bar walking past you and barging you never saying excuse me type of gay and they got a lot of them appeared for the flipping watching his face for the freddie k all nighter and this makes sense though because they're most of my club kids as well but you do get the sense that when certain people play in certain spaces there's definitely a lot more ownership you feel like that crowd of people which you describe as i don't know lgbt um queer or just gay in general they take a lot more ownership like this is my night this is our night this is made for us he represents us bloody blah 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 and there's a lot of kind of like that kind of owning the space and taking it all up in that sort of way and kind of making it be known that this is our party you're kind of the guest which you know is kind of here and there but i just find it interesting that that's a thing because if anything it's a mirror of the thing that that same group would hate in tech house in tech house there's definitely that crew of guys that are in a party or even gals sometime that really take up space and let it be known that you are at their event like they've been at these tech house rates of time they followed said you know richie ahmed or michael bibby they followed they follow these guys all over europe and this is what they do they come out on the weekend you know they work all week and they go hard in the, in, on the weekend and then they do it again um you know another week so it's like it's funny you see the same mirrored sort of thing happening there but that aside and me having a couple of you know embarrassing <laughs> cringe exchanges you know, one thing i have to definitely not do 
especially if I know some of these people from Instagram, because a lot of these people from Instagram, you know, you know them, they're cool, because they're, you know, you just follow them because they're cool, basically, especially club kids, but they're not really people that you should be talking to, unless you know them, unless you're your friend, so me kind of reaching out to say hi to somebody who I know from Instagram, and touching them on the shoulder to say, like, get their attention and say hi, and then them turning to me and just looking at me like, um, you know, gum on the bottom of their shoe, and then kind of saying hi, like, uh, hi, in like a really kind of unenthusiastic way it kind of broke my spirit i'm not gonna lie i broke it broke my spirit i was like oh my god this is so embarrassing i feel i feel like so tiny it kind of reminded me of this one time when i went berkheim i think it was like maybe last year or something um and yeah i think it must have been last year for the club sylvester that happened in like june and you know pablo bozzi was you know playing in the trip triple x room just absolutely shelling and i must have been there just dancing having a good time and i got, kind of you know got friendly with this group of gay guys whatnot and then i guess what did i say um i said something I try to be funny or do something, you know me, innit? I try to be flipping funny and be the flipping, you know, the life of the party and whatnot. And this gay guy just said something like, oh, that's cute. Like, in like a mocking way. And he was way shorter than I was, but he made me feel even shorter. He made me feel shorter than Joe Rogan. Like, that level of short, like five two, five one short. And this guy must have been like five eight, five seven at least, and I'm six foot. So he made me feel shorter than Joe Rogan. So imagine, he reduced me just by saying, oh, that's cute. I was like, oh my God. Like, I don't know what it is <laughs> about gay guys. Like, I really want to be their friends. I really want to, you know, I obviously take part in what you define as their culture in some regards when it comes to, um, you know, certain types of, you know, dance music and clubs and whatnot. Um, I think a good ally. I think, I, you know, I, I kind of respect the spaces and do my thing and kind of go home. But for some reason, they do not like more in the slightest. <laughs> and I try my best to kind of make it work, but it just doesn't work. But anyway, what could you do in it? But big up Freddie K regardless um some of the some of the people that were taking up the space and kind of you know making their presence known can be seen in this picture here but we'll name no names but still i thought they did add to the absolute vibe of the entire place this extended family of people at flipping fold and number another thing to actually mention also this sign because again i haven't been in a long time i don't know why but i always thought this sign was like some nft augmented reality thing i didn't know it was like a real sign they put on the outside it's absolutely amazing the sign they put on the outside of fold so big up them and you know for some reason i always for i don't know maybe it's because of how it looks it just always reminds me of grease muller um the old grease muller uh, fold whenever i look at it. maybe that's why i, I love the place so much because you know i've got so many happy memories of going grease muller and kind of getting my first sort of maybe introduction to the taste of dance music overall from that club but yeah big up everybody's picture because i feel like they generally added to the vibe but also you know I would assume, I can understand if you're somebody fresh to the scene and didn't know none of these people from the internet, how you'd be a little bit intimidated and feel a little bit kind of weirded out that they're taking up a lot of space and kind of dominating everything around you. But again, it's their thing. So that's to be expected. And that's, of course, Monsieur Freddie K. And of course, one of the owners there of Fold as well, doing their thing outside. But yeah, he absolutely smashed it. All vinyl set on there absolutely destroyed shelling um the mixing style was absolutely impeccable also um there were so many um things that kind of reminded me of like old grime djs the way he was sort of like you know tapping you know tunes in channel switching um taking away the bass here and there really building up flipping big drops and whatnot just really technical kind of way of playing and if anything he would also be a very good a very good person to go back to back with maybe devious one i know maybe those guys don't do back to back too often or maybe just be on the same lineup like you know in terms of one after the other i think they would really marry up really well um devious one and flipping freddie k they would do really really good together so big up them all to all, all in all and then of course i did mention the thing about the flipping um stage of course there in terms of the logo so that was pretty cool to see and overall i really had a good time about it and i think i've actually got a couple of audio clips i'm going to post so please bear in mind for that as well um if you want to see those i've got some audio pod audio clips sorry from the night that i'm going to be posting um so you can definitely get an idea of what it kind of sounds like because obviously this club is one of the clubs in london that we have it does have a no photos policy which is obviously great and adds to the law but sometimes you want to hear sound and kind of hear what you kind of missed out on in terms of um the music -y, definitely um i'll add those in on the post so you definitely hear those coming up if you haven't already you definitely hear those coming up right now <laughs>
jump onto some other things that i thought would be of note to talk about before we roll out where is it here yeah let's talk about this actually let's go here so number one talk about here because i haven't actually mentioned these before but i wanted to quickly get you know get my thoughts out there regarding them so i'm sure most of you have seen the tiffany um air force ones that are due to be coming out very soon in march and obviously most people who have taste who have been you know part of sneaker culture for a long time and who have seen great colorways of this sort of tiffany-esque from you know the likes of diamond supply back in the day and whatnot you will definitely know that this is definitely a horrible colorway in terms of a tiffany dunk and if you know tiffany and co is owned by lvmh and one of the sons of the owner of lvmh um alexander i know is now kind of heading up tiffany and doing all that stuff because i think he was working with Ramoa, which was under T um, lvmh also but daddy told him to go work for tiffany so here he is doing his work at tiffany and obviously you know doing his best to sort of damage and tarnish the branding culture but get given an air force one to do which i think is a weird model anyway if you're tiffany personally but still it's a basically a classic model that kind of you know um defies genres defies racial lines economic lines so maybe it covers all things in that regard cool but then i just don't understand the logic of taking an air force one low and basically making it majority black with the exception of a tiffany blue swoosh of course the materials are different i know the upper looks like a, I don't know if it's a velvet, a suede, a nubuck, and then you've got the la eye lace stay, the lace stay bit sort of section on the top here, which is sort of made up in a tumbled leather. And for whatever reason, they decided to have like tubular laces on lows, which is a bizarre choice because those laces have to like work the best on highs. I don't think they work the best on lows. This is just my opinion again. What do I know in this regard? But and then of course you've got the leather lining. So I just don't get the logic of having an all black shoe for a Tiffany for me personally because I feel like one of the things that made the diamond and supply co shoes really good is the breakup of the white midsole of the fact that it's got black and tiffany and the silver essence on the swoosh and even if you look at the all black some of the sample pairs i think these were samples right the black the white and the yellows even the all black one that diamond and co supply made ages ago big up nick tache nick diamonds even the black ones still have a little bit of a breakup, even in terms of the contrast stitching on some of the paneling here on the upper, it helps to break up the, you know, the shape a little bit and kind of divide the cut, spread the colors across the shoe a little bit more. The white midsole, of course, adds to it and whatnot. But just in general, it just looks a little bit more desirable and classic. Even that kind of canary uh, colorway here at the top here is absolutely beautiful in terms of um, getting across the luxuriousness and desirability of Tiffany's, right? You'd imagine so much so but i don't know man whatever reason alexander i know maybe his team um there was another lady also who kind of does tiffany i forgot her name i think she recently left tiffany if i'm not mistaken so people are saying that she was the one that spearheaded this design and it's not alexander arno who knows but whoever designed these i feel like did a really poor job and this is definitely a missed opportunity on top of some of the horrible horrible poem like i think stuff like this they should have maybe seen how the tide was shifting about this online and the reception. Because the thing is, I guess, in some regards, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what most people say in terms of the looks and whether or not these are nice or not. Because essentially what's going to happen is that they'll sell out and they'll still resell for a gazillion bucks. So they're probably going to retail for like, what, 
200 to 400 dollars maybe more and they're probably going to resell you know they're probably minimum going to be like a thousand pounds so clearly in in terms of a brand in terms of sellout culture in terms of all that virality and limited edition nonsense everyone's going to be happy tiffy's going to be happy nike's going to be happy that they sold them out they've got land around the block you know bonus points if someone ends up getting shot somewhere for a pair of these right everyone's going to be over the moon wow someone got shot great amazing more virality add that to the add that to the marketing deck for when we kind of go push somebody else to do a collab so clearly that doesn't matter what i say in that regard but i just think in terms of just what they look like, forget what the collab is. They just don't look great. They're not that impressive. If anything, these are giving very much like JD Sports. Like if you take away that swoosh and you, you know, lower the gradient a little bit and you make that swoosh green, you make it navy blue, suddenly these are not impressive in the slightest. And if you're able to take away one design element and reduce them to absolutely nothing and they're not really special in any way, shape or form, to me, that doesn't make them special. And then you can say, oh, the special thing is a little Tiffany hit at the back of the shoe which, you know, make sure you don't wear these shoes when you go flipping bowling or anything, right? Because that someone is definitely going to just probably snip the flipping back Tiffany thing off the you know off your shoe. Or if anything, they might just take the entire flipping um, shoe itself because obviously of the value. And obviously on the outside, they've got some of these little Tiffany hits there on the inside circle, the cir on, the, on the outsole circular tread here, which looks pretty nice. The, uh, the insole looks probably the nicest bit about the shoe, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty nice seeing the Tiffany blue um insole there with this sort of like silver accents which looks really nice again the tie in that is really weird because these silver accents are seen nowhere if anything part of me thinks maybe if they added the silver accents to the swoosh in terms of that that might have worked but then it would have looked very similar to the virgil designed off-white air force ones maybe one of the ones for the galleries that was black with the silver swoosh that maybe looked too similar to that so maybe that's the reason why they didn't do it but overall i think the choice for these sort of tubular rope laces for lows is bizarre personally for me i just think it looks odd and then it kind of reminds me of those like crappy you know those guys and gals that do those horrible customs where they where they kind of over dye a pair of air force ones and then stick some massive rope laces into them and try and make them look like skate shoes it's just you know people that try and fashionize air force ones that like, really get on my nerves either you just make a new shoe or you wear the shoe the way it's been you know made to be worn kind of thing and just kind of mix it into what you originally wear not everything has to be fashionized it's just annoying but anyway roll on um again not really impressed by most of it i think it looks terrible and another thing that makes it look really bad i think also is the fact that the promotion and the rollout for this was horrible i feel like those pictures of Alexandra is that I think I'm sure that's his name right Alexander um sitting at some basketball game wearing these shoes laced horrible first of all they're not laced properly they're laced like in a Nike way like he just pulled them out of his flipping seeding pair right he got a box sent home and then he just pulled them out and put them on his feet no relacing nothing at all no kind of taking because it's me I'm taking out all the laces and I'm doing the lace what you're meant to do you're meant to kind of lace them from the bottom here over and then they're meant to go over this way and then over that way right not meant to go under meant to go over so you get like a nice sort of like v pattern going up and then obviously for bonus points if on the right foot the the right lace has to go over and the left, left foot the left has to go over but if you know you know if you don't you don't don't you know whatever it may be but he just sat down at that basketball game with a pair of on and he looked so awkward so uncool so clumsy so trash that i don't think that helped in terms of the coolness appeal of this because i don't think any of the cool kids are looking at these and thinking these are hard if anything they're just going to be desirable because they're limited edition the thing they probably should have done earlier on is probably got someone from the you know the clout instagram outfit generation to put these on and to kind of really freak them that might have added to the law in the same way that mischief did with those astro boots like see them to some really cool influential influencers um and then get them to kind of style them in a cool way and then that might have kind of turned the tide on them but just objectively from a picture because i'm happy that I didn't do that I'm happy i didn't get blinkered by someone wearing a crazy good outfit and making them look good um or just having really perfect size feet to make them look good i'm glad i just got to see the pure picture of the shoe and i was like you know what dud dead and if anything these made me want to get another pair because i originally had these when i when they first came out the tiffany sorry the the diamond supply uh, tiffany dunks i originally had a pair and i think i might have queued up to i think i might have got these at like slam city when they did a pop-up at no that wasn't 
I think Santos get popped up at Nike Towns when I got my What the Dunks, which unfortunately I got scammed for. My first ever scam and last scam, someone scammed me for those What the Dunks. So I, I purchased them, went to resell them, which maybe is my karma for reselling the shoe. And then the person got me to send the money. No, got me to send them before them sending the money. And then they didn't send them. And then, yeah, just that, that kind of easy scam people to do back in the day. Horrible. I still cry about it to this day. But the Tiffany Dunks I got in that era but I remember when I got these I unfortunately got them in the wrong size they didn't have a size 10 so I had to get them in like a nine and a half and my feet already were growing back then and they're now growing to now I'm like a probably a ten and a half, maybe an 11 even in Dunks but I had these in nine and a half and I took out the insole I put them in the freezer I stretched them I did as much as I could but they died after a while because my toe my big toe was pointing at the front like it was pointing, like pushing that flipping mud guard right in the front, really making it triangular shit. I think some people used to laugh at me and I didn't end up wearing them for too long and then I ended up kind of, you know, reselling them, um, you know, beaten and used for maybe like 400 quid or something back then, which is kind of crazy how they held their value. And you can see here on GOAT, they go for, um, I don't know what size, okay, 10.5, they go for already 3,717. So that makes sense that they're still holding their value to this level. But yeah, man, like, I'm not really that impressed with these uh, Tiffany Air Force Ones, to be honest. I think they look pretty crap. Um, very, 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 very underwhelming. And um, they're due to come out when? It says here, official date. Release date has been expected to be March 7th, 2023. So I guess if you're interested, go and cop them. Retail's gonna, probably going to be about £400. Yeah, there we go, $400 retail. Release date is Tuesday, March 7th. So definitely keep an eye out for them if you're interested. But for me, they're definitely a pass. For me, they're definitely a pass. And then I wanted to talk about this. I thought this was quite interesting to talk about. So as most of you know, I'm a big, you know, dance music fan, go to a lot of raves and whatnot. Um, obviously, I'm also a DJ on the side as a hobby. And also, hopefully sometime in the future, it will become a profession, but I'm enjoying it as a hobby. And it's probably one of the best hobbies a man can do, with the exception of golf and maybe playing, you know, five a side power league or something. But I think DJing is pretty decent, especially with places like Pirate um, Studios out there where you can go and, you know, dance and hang out and have a good time. So I'm definitely a fan of that. But one place I definitely am a fan of also is live streaming platform Hall, which is obviously located in Berlin, which I kind of discovered around the pandemic time because that's when they basically didn't launch. But they, I think, were really influential and really kind of important in that time because if anything it feels like again from the outside looking in they did a good job in terms of holding that scene together because i remember reading loads of articles like quite a few actually maybe a couple on the podcast maybe one from like the site called ex berliner as well where basically they profiled and highlighted a lot of the people in the scene who are really struggling mentally during the pandemic and during the lockdown and not being able to go to raves not being able to just go outside not be able to kind of do their art and create be around their friends it became a really isolating and lonely time and it felt like Berlin for the most part suffered quite a lot because you know you'd imagine that city with some exception but for the most part most people do go there to kind of you know creatively liberate themselves and also to kind of go and go balls deep and dive themselves in a deep end when it comes to dance music and club culture so to not have that must have been brutal especially when you're in a place that is essentially a 24-hour city where you can party from like Friday to Monday with no stop maybe you know maybe more days also um but I think Hall did a good job to kind of plug that gap in terms of providing people a platform to kind of showcase their skills, to connect with the local community and still feel like they're part of and they're DJing and whatnot. So I thought that was pretty cool. And also I did a good job to kind of regionalize and sort of specialize that platform because I feel like Boiler Room, for whatever reason, you know, it's gone global now. And obviously it doesn't necessarily represent a particular area anymore. It's just more sort of a global thing. And there's other places that also do the local thing in terms of Lot Radio New York and whatnot. But I don't think Berlin ever had one. And for whatever reason, Hall came around and kind of grabbed that. I was able to kind of claim it. And so far, they've done a really good job. Even though they get people coming in from all over the place. I think I emailed them once before when they were kind of small to kind of get a set on there, which kind of, you know, the email exchange was good. But then over time, because I didn't reply back in time and whatnot, you know, it kind of deaded out. And, you know, now they're super massive. I'm assuming they're probably flooded with requests. So I'm probably not even, you know, I'm not even going to bother trying to get involved in that thing again. You know, um, if it does come about, it will come about naturally and organically through, you know, people maybe discovering me and that got shot going on. But obviously I'd love to go in there. But there's a lot of people going on there now who don't even live in Berlin. So that's pretty cool to see. So definitely you can see they've kind of done that. But I still like the fact that even though they're quite international, they still have a 
core to it where they represent the local scene you don't have to you don't have to be originally from germany to be on it obviously not but it's still representative of the local scene i actually like that and i also like the fact that the programming is really diverse in terms of the genres of djs it's not just techno everyone everything under the sun which is obviously not reflective i feel like of the city personally the city's mo you know, mostly techno but then the whole does a good job of showcasing everything else outside of that so big up them for doing so but this collaboration with adidas I feel like I wonder if this might be the beginning of the end. Not too sure in terms of what they mean and what the peer and the vibe and what the authenticity. Because I feel like as soon as <laughs> this is a really weird thing, right? Example, but I feel like as soon as Broiler Room started doing Ray Ban stuff, uh, maybe even Red Bull. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I think it was Ray Ban. So I'm thinking, or maybe Bet Bella. What's 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 Valentine? Is that Valentine's the same thing? Anyway, whatever. Whenever Boiler Room, let's, let's just go with Ray, Ray, Ray Band. Whenever Boiler Room started to have that relationship with Ray Band, I feel like that's when Boiler Room started to go, no, started to nosedive and it never kind of recovered in terms of cultural relevancy. It's still very popular, but in terms of it being a thing that people want to go to, not so much. Like, I remember going to, again, Berlin again, but I remember going to Berlin one time for Fashion Week and going to a Boiler Room and seeing loads of scene people, like actual scene people. Um, and be oh this is actually a cool thing to go to right nowadays i don't think any scene person will be seen dead at a boy room event because it's kind of you know a normally generic kind of genre you know person type of thing you know they did a collaboration with fucking jack moose you know what i mean it's becoming like just another promotional platform for you to kind of push your thing if you want to appeal to people that are into dance music or maybe you know get a hold of the gen z audience so i'm wondering if these sort of collaborations where you you know partner up with these big corporations or these big companies like Adidas, if this is either an opportunity for you to do what most underground niche people should do, instead of selling out, you should be taking that money from those quick corporations, doing that collaboration, and then feeding that back into the grassroots, local, underground stuff that you're doing. It should That should be it. But selling out, obviously, is when you take that money and then you just forget about the people that kind of brought you up there and you just keep servicing the people at the top there because obviously the money's better. Um, but obviously, you know, the reason why you got that money is because of what you did in the underground. But, you know, it's, it's a common, you know, common flipping argument people have in terms of overground and underground. But I'm just, I don't know if this is a sign or this is wherever they're going to use this correctly to kind of just keep propelling and magnifying what they're doing while still maintaining their core or if it's impossible anyway to do. Now, is, that, is that just a thing? Maybe it's impossible to do. Who knows? But anyway, this is courtesy of Hypebeast. It says, Adidas announces partnership with techno collective Hall Berlin. Um, it says as follows. Adidas announced a partnership with German music collective Hall Berlin, world renowned for spotlighting the best up and coming talent in techno and wider world for electronic music. The group rise, uh, sorry, the group first, 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 first arose as a requiem to the club and streaming club closures seen across the globe due to the COVID-19 pandemic while the clubs and ambience certainly play a role in any live music experience founders Charlie and Ori who originally hail from Tel Aviv why do they do this in dance music by the way I, I, I just I thought about this when I was reading this just now why is this always a thing like to mention where you're originally from like even me I think I've got on my profile on SoundCloud like London based it's like why do I why do people write that like who cares where you're from really like someone wants to book you they'll book you it doesn't matter if you're from Timbuktu you know if you're in the philippines if you're in botswana if you're in honduras it doesn't matter if you're good and they like what you do they're gonna make a way to kind of get you out there and maybe it's advantageous if you're in europe because they can basically you know don't have to pay too much to get you in it's further it's closer cool but this whole like originally from as if that kind of informs your musical you know taste or it makes you a better artist where you're from just like you know where you happen to be born it's quite bizarre personally but i don't know maybe it's a thing to kind of you know Maybe people f because we're all doing the same thing essentially we're all pressing the same cue and play button we're all kind of touching the same jog wheel in order to kind of differentiate ourselves make ourselves feel different and to kind of really kind of you know separate us from the pack instead of being really good at what you do and separate yourself from your skill and your craft just say you're london based right or whatever he identifies maybe that's the reason why i'm not really too sure but i've always thought again this is talking i'm speaking out loud because of myself also because i feel like i ten times tend to do this also it's just like it's just a bit weird um but yeah who knows who cares let's continue uh Charlie and Ori, who originally hailed from Tel Aviv, sought to bring back the focus of the music itself by providing up-and-coming artists within marginalized communities a platform to broadcast their talents in what is now Horst Signature Neon Tile Cube, um, located in Volkspark Hassenheide Park in Berlin. 
And of course, you got there. They just team up. Let's actually see. They've got a track here as well. Let's see. Hopefully, I don't get taken down for this. But there's a there's a track here and a promo. Let's see what this sounds like. I don't actually. I haven't actually heard this. Let's see. If this is any good. Everything will be. Nice. Take off the music before I get copyright striked. Nice. Loving it. Loving it. Uh, you got hoodies. You got these. Um. You got the Pooh Shiesty mask. You got a pair of trainers that look a bit dead, to be honest, in my opinion. But hey, it is what it is. And I wonder these. You know what? I, I don't mind these collections because, if anything, these should be done more often. Where maybe imagine Adidas already have. This probably is a thing. I'm thinking out loud again. Probably these sportswear brands have like, or Adidas should have a small selection of clothing that could easily be kind of adapted by people in streetwear or whatever it may be like maybe a particular type of jacket a particular type of pants a particular type of shoes and then you just get a brand to kind of plug and play right and to kind of edit certain things so maybe there's a you know to kind of go through maybe that is a good way to kind of push out collab so that it's not a thing that kind of relies on you having to get the sign off from adidas corporate overall so so the reason why i say that so that you can do more like um smaller niche type of projects and collaborations that aren't just always big corporate stuff i wonder if they do that i'm not sure if nike ever do that but that'd be a pretty way good way to go about things or you have particular base models maybe a particular shoe maybe a particular type of jacket maybe it's a wind runner maybe it's a varsity jacket maybe it's a particular type of rain jacket and then you just kind of have people kind of you know add different stuff to it maybe they design different colors for it different details branding whatever but it's kind of the same sort of thing and they can kind of twist it in their own sort of way so you, so you can have a way for the brand to kind of collaborate with you add to your clout and also a way to kind of sell bits and bobs of that stuff and maybe get people in involved in the things that you're doing maybe who knows who knows who knows who knows anyway let's continue on so we got that and then we got um earlier this month um Hall took to instagram to announce that they would be hosting a special broadcast for the adidas flagship store in berlin which will take place tomorrow at february 19th which already passed and the streaming event will be available to watch via youtube and it's all about techno retro running according to a statement by the german sports company stay up to date of course that's what they're gonna do let's see what the other let's see who actually performed it i don't know what they did who, who actually was taking part in this performance and retro running um event I wonder if they had like a foot cam similar to that guy Hector Oaks, right? They had like a foot cam with someone just tapping behind the decks as they're playing. That could be an absolutely good thing, isn't it, right? Let's see what this is. This is the pit. Is this the post from the event? Here with them two wearing the the, the Pooh Shiesty mask. Yeah, yep, we got there. Today's program live from Adidas DE um, is uh, they had Soul Seek playing. They had a person called Bra Who's that? Bao Groupie 90, Carmen Electro, who I'm a big fan of, who I get her discovered from Flipping Hall. So Carmen Electro is absolutely amazing. Um, and the person called Cyclo, who I'm not really too familiar with, but that should be pretty hard. Um, have we got any clips from this? It's from a day ago, isn't it? Probably not got any clips. So let's just quickly check the Instagram and see what I want on the stories bit. Okay, we've got Carmen Electro playing here, as you can see probably on the YouTube. Let's actually see the sound of that. Is there any sound? Yeah, there is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that in the slightest. I'm not going to lie. I'm not mad at that in the slightest. I'm not mad at this. Let's just turn it off. I'm not mad at the slightest. I've got limitation of tickets for Paris. But yeah, looks pretty cool. Not really mad at that. Let's go back to the collection itself. What does it feature? Does it tell us what they've got here? Whoops, let's get off that. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So from what I can see here on the picture, if I get this up on the screen, we have... The Pooh Shiesty Balaclava mask type of thing. You have hoodies and you have what look like double knee track pant trousers type of things. And from my experience, not that great running shoes. I don't know what model of Adidas that is, but not the nicest, not going to lie. But still, maybe in terms of a raver, in terms of being out all day on your feet and getting your steps in, it might be a good um, shoe to wear. But I do like the fact that they've done something with such a small what well, relatively small platform i'd assume and kind of did something local in terms of doing in the flipping adidas berlin location is absolutely cool as well and obviously um having a core activation where they kind of handle that sort of stuff is actually great and kind of program the environment entire event they didn't push flipping david rodigan onto them or something right or whatever else you know like they, they just let them do their thing that's absolutely great i like all of that and i think this is right outside the studio also right they really do popularize where it is and it? it's not 
a lot of kind of you know i guess it's maybe they don't care maybe because they've got security but you know I, even i recognize i think that's near where the actual studio is this alleyway because i'm pretty sure i see djs who've played there before upload on instagram that they're around there so maybe it's a thing maybe they don't care maybe it's in a good residential area it doesn't matter but yeah the stuff looks does look pretty decent you've got the hoodie there and then you've got those kind of um they kind of look like a engineer, what do you call them? Electrician pants, right? I think I got a pair as well. They kind of look similar to those in that regard. But the shoes look a bit better in this outfit here. But still, you know, it's it's decent. It's decent enough. It's good. I like it. I'm not too not I'm not too fond of the shoes, but I do like everything else about it. And yeah, you get to see how they grow, how it continues, man. Like um I don't know if this is gonna impact the brand overall going forward, if this is a sign they're gonna be selling out or if this is just a necessary part of the journey and you know, the funds from this project also can go to kind of essentially paying for a lot more time a lot more runway because these things are, i'd imagine they're not cheap to run overall right um i don't know if they're booking people now they're paying people i don't know what the deal is but i'd imagine day-to-day -day costs and this type of thing are probably quite high so in order to maintain your long-term future you might have to do these little brand deals to kind of really kind of had the bills paid for the next few months and then continue to do all your nice cool underground stuff going forward but i do also like the fact that they don't really do many parties i feel like maybe it's just me because i'm not really checking i'm not really in berlin too often so i don't really know but from what i remember i don't really see them doing events too often i know they've got this thing they're promoting here in paris they're gonna do right they've got like a paris event that they're kind of promoting here let's see what that says here but i feel like they kind of do a good job to kind of keep the parties somewhat cool and chill not doing too many of them so it says stuck to announce our first paris takeover march 4th at station garden means uh stay tuned for the lineup so yeah so they you know some here and there but they don't go over the top of the parties kind of keep it core and so far so good to them isn't it so big up hall big up any for putting it together and hopefully this doesn't mark the end and it's just the start of something really cool and interesting going forward one can only hope one can only hope one can only hope so next on list here i want to talk about is this of course i thought was really interesting i want to talk about the supreme store that opened up recently in west hollywood it looks absolutely beautiful absolutely gorgeous it's courtesy of the new supreme store which is now running on shopify hallelujah um no more splay r.i.p splay even a spare you know back in the days the forum if you know you know back in the day display forums. i think that's more where I, where I might find out where um supreme originally made their sweats with that company was it raining champ it might have been through that forum actually back in the day um so big up display forum and the guys over there for putting them together and whatnot they did a good job you know beforehand i'm not sure if so the rumor is true i remember there's a rumor from back in the day that the people in display who actually built the supreme site they didn't take any money they just did some deal where they took a percentage of online sales or something you can only imagine how much money those guys made, man. Like, God damn, or something to do with that. I'm not sure if that's true. It might be a wife's tale, but regardless, um, big up them for what they did. But obviously, we're on to the next. And this store, this is obviously already opened. It says here, Supreme West Hollywood. On Thursday, February 16th, Supreme will reopen its Los Angeles store at a new location. The store is on 888. 01 sunset boulevard and of course you can see the times and dates here but the most important thing is the pictures because supreme retail stores are always so nicely done the fact that they paint this entire store white is such a ballsy and risky move because you know you know this whole entire thing is going to be covered in spray paint sooner rather than later now i don't know if they're going to keep painting over it i don't know if they're going to specify certain walls can be painted on and sprayed and tagged but I have a feeling it's going to be covered in paint. Obviously, the, the start of it with the stairs is quite nice because you imagine someone's going to be able to film a video, a part in this where they maybe drop down from this section and come out through the door and grind some of these handrails or something or clear the entire stairs or clear the stairs and the pavement and hit the road. Who knows? But it looks kind of cool in that regard. And look at the hills there with the houses on top. It's a really nice location. Only from this angle. I'm not sure what it looks like overall. But it's funny, there's a car park next to it. It kind of reminds me of that New York car park where there's a car, there was a car park across the road that kind of had the story thing you know what i'm talking about but anyway um yeah the store looks lovely <laughs> all white is a bit risky but the inside looks absolutely lovely with the bowl and um is it nate lauman i'm assuming insulation so maybe it's mark Gonzalez. not really too sure but either way i think there's some neck face art in there as well it looks like but it's just a beautiful retail store like supreme do a really good job of having that desirability online and somehow offline which not a lot of brands have i think a lot of brands kind of rely i, I remember hearing or oh, so no, the founder of aries basically talking in an interview with how long gone speaking about how important it was for them to open a store 
because they feel like that's going to be the best way to tell the airy story and it's like yeah but you should also be able to tell it through the clothes online isn't it because everyone's basically on the internet uh, but i also understand how hard it is maybe for a brand like that where you're kind of multifaceted there's a lot of kind of layers to the stuff you put out you know some stuff kind of goes over people's heads it's kind of nice to get that store so you get a tactile feel of it and you can kind of circuit it all in from the incense to the music playing to the books that are on display to the people working there everything kind of ties into it so maybe that's important but i feel like supreme did a good job of doing it online and offline anyway like you you felt you like supreme had a like you know the kind of cool appeal and the wanting appeal from just seeing other skaters wear it you know you didn't have to skate just seeing them wear it, it kind of made you want to kind of wear it and sometimes even start skating which is absolutely hey crazy but yeah, overall, retail-wise, it absolutely looks impeccable. Very well done. I wonder who designed it interior-wise, but it looks always great. Very just easily done. Nice concrete, you know, shined, polished floors. A couple of rails on the side there. Some shelving with some T-shirts, which you are never meant to touch. <laughs> and then, of course, a wall with flipping skateboard decks and some massive speak. And one thing I always like about Supreme, they let the stores just blast the music like the music is like ear splittingly loud i remember that being the first thing i checked i kind of realized when i went to the the supreme store back in the day long time ago maybe 20, 2007 or something stupid like that in new york and that was six to kind of walk in and hear them playing flipping what's it called um what's his name him playing uh black sabbath really flipping loud um was really part of the experience i kind of made before love with the brand but yeah it's flipping amazing and i also love the little seating area here it's just one big concrete slab which i'm sure was made by somebody very cool and influential the mirrors are always lovely i feel like in there also it's very very underrated the cool mirrors that they have and yeah in general i like the space it looks absolutely amazing like i said i'm just not sure about the white all exterior because that's definitely going to get absolutely trod up and torn to pieces you would imagine you would imagine but <clears throat> moving on i quickly want to touch upon some of the stuff that i feel like i liked from the spring 2023 um preview that i'm obviously you know always flipping in touch with and kind of looking at and oogling and wanting to buy um a few pieces here which i've you know i bought maybe a couple already but still wanted to quickly get you know let you know the bits and pieces that i saw from the preview that i thought really stood out for me first things first is this jacket this supreme and scott leather racer jacket of course the silver is a standout color for me personally especially you know the one featured on the model on the lookbook also makes it look absolutely amazing but regardless the jacket itself is absolutely lovely the shape of it is great i think one thing supreme don't get enough credit on is the cut of their jackets from the trapper trucker type jean jacket that they sell to the work jacket they do a really good job of getting the fit and the shape of the jackets great and i feel like their relationship with scott um, even though they obviously Scott have got like you know they got classic flipping shapes and jackets all over the place I feel like Supreme are still able to kind of customize the overall shape of them and make them slightly kind of too spec custom wise maybe you know the addition of this sort of like Wrangland sleeve on this is maybe something that they kind of you know maybe added they maybe maybe shorten the body maybe decided to go for a zip closure instead of a snap like loads of little things that they do that really 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 cool but I like this and it says here cowhide leather with satin lining and four zip closures double welt zip pockets at the lower pockets and deboss low got a chest pocket as well oh that's what i love as well see not anything crazy a deboss logo there that's it on the chest pocket because that's one thing i'm annoyed about the modern day supreme now the logos and the branding is just so ott i think i'm just happy that there's not a massive supreme and wow on the back of this this is really 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 beautiful even the black is really nice can you see the embossing a lot on the black one let's see, let's see. the embossing and you can't really see it too tough on the black either it's really really subtly done actually let's zoom in here yeah you can't really see it too tough at all it's really subtly done and you'd imagine after a long time of wearing it that's the thing i love about this it's like it reminds me of that balenciaga blouson that that leather jacket that everyone's been wearing now i think Kanye obviously made it popular that kind of leather jacket it's really cool because number one the b on the chest is screen printed so over time that will wear out and kind of especially if you wear it every day like you're meant to wear it and kind of break it in and have and make it crease up and whatnot and live in it it will wear out and eventually that that white little b will fade out but you still have the little markings of it before but somebody with a discerning eye who knows what's up will be able to tell straight away that's balenciaga so i love that same thing about with the supreme jacket like it doesn't look like a regular scott jacket someone will definitely know this is either a brand 
either a brand, a collaboration, or something really pricey. Do you know what I mean? Which is absolutely great because you know what else would you want to wear those clothes for? Then another one I really liked the look of was this Gore-Tex pack light lightweight shell, which I said before I think online somewhere it kind of reminded me of like old school Hiroshi Fujiwara vibes. Some of the stuff he used to do collaborations. I forgot the the snowboarding brand, but he used to do loads of collaborations with stuff like this. When you know back then the the old man who like streetwear and Asian women and Asian food and, um, you know, who likes to play vinyl and loves flipping, um, you know, Eric Clapton, those type of dudes, right? Those like 50 plus guys. One thing that they love to do as an extracurricular activity is snowboard and skiing and shit. And um, they'd always wear these really expensive, high grade tech wear type of brands. And for whatever reason, you know, who actually really, really got into it. I think he snowboards really well also, don't get me wrong. But um, he used to always make these type of jackets. I feel like these sort of like polka dot design type of, you know, snowboardy type outwear type of jackets, which I really love the look of. So I think this looks absolutely brilliant, especially this sort of like rainbowish type of color. Um, Gore Tex with tapes seams and i also like the fact that the supreme logo is done the way it's done you got this label here that you can easily um unstitch if you wanted to which is something that a lot of people do they kind of debadge a lot of the clothing i think i've done that with a couple of backpacks i had like a i had like a um what's it called I have like a, it's something Thieves, maybe it's a Supreme 12th or 11th, but unfortunately it was fake, I didn't know it was fake when I bought it, but unfortunately it did turn out to be a fake, but I loved it anyway, but I didn't like the logo because it was too big and broad, so I just took them off, um, and I kind of debatched a few other books, and sorry, a little, a little a few other um, little pouches and stuff that I have as well, because I just like the shape of them better, but I like that that logo could easily be debagged, if, sorry, it could easily be debadged, the addition of the hood is really brilliant, and also that little sorry let's get that let's zoom out so a little bit here let's zoom out and let's go back there i like the logo here has been pixelated here towards the back of it as well it's actually brilliant oh there's three logos how many logos do you need there's one in the back of the neck i didn't clock that oh annoying <laughs> see there's so many logos everywhere <laughs> but anyway this is what supreme is now isn't it? you can't really complain too tough but yeah in the black obviously it comes in the way it comes in but i think obviously that polka dot colorway is obviously the standout colorway in that one and then another thing i really liked was a look at this gore-tex leather 700 fill down parker it's a 700 down you know fill parker that you would i forgot what they originally called in new york but they're a particular jacket that new york guys love um but i've never seen it done in leather they always kind of done class i don't know what the material is on the outside maybe it's polyester whatever it is a shell and then obviously a down on the inside but to see it done in all leather that's a floss and I imagine this is going to be grand in terms of pricing but i just love the look of it overall and obviously the hood looks fucking brilliant again supreme don't get enough credit for the hoods and their jackets they always fit amazing um this jacket is one of the winners really calm winner it's a madras reversible windstopper puffer jacket it reminds me instantly I forgot what show it was, but do you remember that fashion show that Playboy Carty was performing at where he's like dancing on stage? He's dancing in the middle of the runway. Actually, let me see if I can get it up here. Let me see if I can get it up. It's a Playboy Carty runway. Um, let me see. He's on like a fashion runway. He's performing somewhere and he's like dancing and it, feel, it kind of reminds me that jacket of that time. What, what, I don't know what collection it was he was performing at. Okay, this is the one. Um, I don't know what collection it was. Don't get me wrong. And who it was for. Oh, it's V Files. Okay, it was V Files. Get up on the screen. So this was from V Files era. You know, Playboy Card when he used to wear Supreme, right? This is the era. Oh, was it the same oh shit, it was the same show that he did no way, was it the same show or am I bugging out? It's got a picture here of Young Fug when he got up and styled that guy in the middle of a show. I don't think it was the same show, but still, you've got this um amazing, amazing era. So that kind of that jacket with the flipping tart and madras kind of reminded me of that i don't actually know where that jacket is actually from to be completely honest but um that kind of reminded me of that kind of iconic picture let me see if i can get up again so yeah that's what it sort of reminded me of obviously i love it and obviously the blue on the inside is pretty decent as well if you're going to reverse it but of course the the, the, the standout is definitely that kind of polka dot pattern color and obviously you've got black as well that looks really nicely done but yeah just great isn't it? look at those colors and the shape of these are just this one thing I, I I was saying before prior to Supreme that I've always thought would happen and it kind of has has been over time they've done so many collaborations with outwear brands and stuff and whatnot making jackets but I always felt like over time they'll slowly but surely start making their own because I remember James Jebby always saying in interviews that Supreme could collaborate with the best in class who's whatever sector they went to work in so if it was hiking boots or running shoes or sneakers or hats whatever whoever did the best 
version of that they will collaborate rather than try and make it themselves but obviously over time when you work with these companies you start to realize you know in your production methods and increase and you make more money you can maybe invest into making those things yourself so it's no surprise in recent years supreme make more in-house gore-tex jackets um you know uh, what you call it puffer jackets in general than it did in the past so the need for collaborations to fill in those kind of holes is kind of dwindled over time which has been great to see i also like this which is kind of weird because i'm talking about the logos and whatnot but i just like the shape and the cut of it overall the supreme on the chest is so obnoxious personally for me but i still like something about it i think if i was 19 i definitely would wear it um this uh crook for this crook faux for um overcoat is also very 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 beautiful there's something that looks almost tom fordy about that of course there's kurt Cobain sweater it's definitely something that i would be wearing nice little cable knit little sweat there another little mesh striped shirt that i'm sure will be a lot of people will turn off at this this is a bit marmite i'm sure for some people but i absolutely love this a little bit of mesh a little bit of nipple poking through down the chest as you're out there slipping on a couple of my ties and finger banging somebody at the bar i'm definitely game for that one patchwork short sleeve shirt as well I like the look of this also we're going to quickly run through some so I don't waste so much time we've got cherry shirt i also like that like the look of that in terms of a short sleeve shirt this shirt i really like this crochet football jersey if I'm not mistaken, this is the first collection that Tremaine Emery from Denim Tears has been kind of involved with because now he's the, what is he, art director or creative director, one of them, or Supreme now, um, which is obviously amazing to see. So bravo to him. She's somebody from a kind of, you know, basically making it from the ground up without being involved with the Supreme team in that regard. I know he's maybe associated with the family, but getting that job that way is really good because, you know, for the most part, you hear a lot of people working Supreme are kind of, you know, people within the inside who kind of know them or work within the company already kind of get promoted up. So someone from the external kind of team, I feel like it's pretty cool. Even though he's got a long history with those guys in general, it's just cool to see overall. Um, I feel like this might be one of the first pieces I've seen that might be, it feels like a touch of Tremaine and Dead in Tears. It's hard to really kind of, you know, pin him, pigeonhole him really outside of the flipping, um, the reef pants or whatnot, but, and the, the denim or whatnot. But I feel like this might be something that would, this Tremaine would be involved in, in designing this crochet top a little bit. Not too sure. Maybe there's other things also. I'm not too sure, but this feels like something that Tremaine might be involved in. If not, it's still nice. Um, you've got this character soccer jersey as well that I like to look at with his anime eyes. I feel it's nice. This uh, knit stripe tank um, jack mesh top is lovely. I feel like very, very well done. It kind of reminds me again of Supreme of Old that I fell in love with. Very subtle bit of branding and logoing here. If you know, you know type of thing. I love the look of that also. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I like this also, this Ronin shirt. Really nice. Loads of Asian influences dotted around the Supreme collection. Of course, the inside out uh, box logo hoodie is absolutely splendid for me personally. I love the look of this. The colors it comes in as well are really nice that olive um green type of color in the red are probably the standout ones for me personally but you know i'm sure most people are going to go with the flipping what you call it the white and gray the gray with the red box logo because a red box logo typical type of stuff that happens with that these work pants i think are really nice as well I'm sure most people won't be fans of them. I like this crochet hat that goes to the shirt, of course, because I'm a black guy, so I like to matchy match stuff. <laughs> I like these, um, what you call it? These what are they call the Gore-Tex patch light wet bonnie hats. These look really nice as well. Again, these hats for me personally, they're kind of like trucker hats in a little bit, oh, kind of like um, well, not trucker hats, kind of like bucket hats. Bucket hats for me, especially with my hair, my head shape. I always feel like I look like schoolboy Q, but I know I don't in real life, so it's probably you know i should miss that this is a definitely a piece that i feel like a lot of people are probably sleeping on these ebbett fields um six panel hats again for me for my big head these you know maybe in a five seven and five and a eight seven and five it's probably be my size but I'd, I'd wear every single one obviously i'd go with black or navy or pink but every colorway would definitely be up there the shape of them looks fantastic um nice uh fitted wall amazing um made exclusively for supreme so they're going to be buttery soft and whatnot to wear so these are going to be really really nice i really like look at those these are another uh, hats that i feel like um, sorry another piece that i feel like tremaine might have been involved in from dead in tears this is line of judah six panel hat i feel this is really nicely done also but again my head's too big for these type of things i'd imagine maybe it's kind of a dad hat shape but i think these are really really nice these hats all the color all the colorways work really well there another hat that i like the look of is uh this uh which is the sex in heaven 
um, shirt, with jacket, of course, the, sorry, sorry, hat, trucker hat, classic with the black and white and blue and white. You know, you like those. This HOSP, I like the look of also. I wonder what HOSP stands for. If anyone knows in the, in the comments, let me know with the Sup NY 23 one in the back. But all these colors look nice. The standout for me probably would be this red. I remember seeing this guy when I went to a club recently who kind of had a really nice red trucker hat on with a nice branding on it. That kind of reminds me of this, sort of like a vintage feel. So it's red nice. Maybe that brown with the yellow is also is pretty decent. And of course, the black with the red is nice. You've got another kind of mesh six panel hat altogether that could fit my cranium. You know, all these things will fit me because they've got, what they call them? Is that like a high dome? I think that's what they're called, right? Because my head, I think I need either six panels because obviously it makes it fit a little bit bigger, I think. And also the dome this bit from the, the from the top to the edge kind of needs to be high i feel like supreme do a good job of doing that so they definitely sort of uh appeal to the big headed guys out there no pun intended this would be nice as well this nameplate uh mesh hat as well is also lovely that's amazing i love that that's absolutely gorgeous that's probably going to do numbers i reckon when it comes out people are going to be big fans of those oh that looks flipping gorgeous i love that and of course, you got this one too, Joan of Arc. I like the look of this also. That's a really lovely hat. Uh, I think all the, I can imagine some of the red scare girls will be wearing this, some of the red scare girlies. Another good new rings, new era. I'm a big fan of also. The field backpack is gorgeous. Um, I, I was umming and ahhing on what to get, and I didn't. I took too long, and it got sold out online. I'm sure they're going to be available in store, but I'm not really too sure what color to go with. The olive green has all these little nice little drawings, illustrations all over them that kind of remind me of Mark Gonzalez. I'm assuming maybe he kind of sketched all over it, the Supreme and whatnot. Um, and then obviously the black with the logo and the red. I was thinking about getting a red one, but you know, walking around with a red backpack is a little bit obnoxious, isn't it? I don't know, but I'm not sure what color to go with, but again, probably to be an in-store thing. This Supreme and Singing Machine uh, collab is absolutely beautiful. I definitely want this as well. This looks amazing. Bluetooth compatible karaoke machine with a built-in pitch tune and eight inch full range woofer and free Twitter for four range sound, two microphones included, USB input and 25 plus rechargeable power battery. Amazing. So that definitely be nice to be having in a crib for when no one comes over <laughs> this is a uh, chain lighter is also really nice uh chain zippo with diamond embossed logo and removable uh, 20 inch chain i think that's going to do probably some numbers even some myself doesn't smoke this toolbox is absolutely banging i'm definitely going to get this when this drops for sure and the tamagotchi is going to do bits when this end up end up dropping and of course finally these repeat leather belts i'm a sucker for this i really am i shouldn't be but i'm a sucker for this like i want this red belt so bad with this like just red supreme just written like that it looks absolutely gorgeous to me i know probably to most people they're gonna look at something this is fucking ugly but this belt just done that way looks brilliant to me in that regard maybe the neo made a black but that red colorway straight away. i know it's probably gonna get banged up and look horrible after time but i'm you know i want this so badly those belts so yeah loads of great stuff for supreme as per usual they always do great and amazing things and definitely one of my favorite brands out there so if you have purchased anything for supreme 2023 spring let me know in the comments down below i'll be eager to hear your opinions Anyway, that's been the Action Zing Show episode number, what is it? Four, is it? Six, four, eight, I think. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. As per usual, you know what to do. If you want to contact me, all the links are available in the, in the what you call it, the comments down below or descriptions down below. You can check that out. If you're listening via the audio podcast, you'll hear my tune of the day. If you're watching via YouTube, you won't hear any of that. It will just kind of fade to black. But I'll see you guys very, very soon. And I'll hopefully hang out again. But for now, take care. Be safe and... Peace.